In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to seal up a diff with RTV so you don't have to worry about leaks and problems down the line with oil drippage from your diff. All you're going to need for this is some RTV to make your gasket for your diff. You're going to need your differential and your cover. In some cases, there's an aluminum carrier like this. In other cases, you'll just have a cover that's going to go onto your diff. Regardless, it's going to be a very similar process, so this will help you out. And then you need some cleaners and something to get off your old sealer that was on the diff. With that said, let's start cleaning this thing up and getting it ready to be sealed up. Let's get into it. The first thing that we wanna do here is clean up our sealing surfaces and get them ready to properly seal. If there's grease and old sealer on there, there's a good chance you're not gonna get a good seal, so we're gonna clean that up. To do that, I have some heavy duty degreaser here. I'm gonna spray it down and I'm gonna just use a really, really light Scotch-Brite pad to help pull those contaminants off of that surface and get it ready to be all sealed up. There's also a little bit of leftover silicone sealer from the last time that this was sealed and I'm just going to use a nylon knife to go ahead and get that stuff off of there. Actually a lot of what we're seeing here is that old sealer. So once again just use something like a nylon knife and scrape that off and that will prepare your surface and get it ready. Once you've scraped off all your sealer go ahead and hit it with your degreaser again. Make sure it's nice and clean and then we can move on to the next part. The insides of this diff cover also weren't super clean and there was some buildup in there with some uh, dirt and some other stuff that I don't want in my diff. So I'm just gonna give that a quick scrub and then hose that out as well. Now we wanna come over and go ahead and do the same thing on the diff. Once again, this is the sealer that we're gonna remove. It's a different color because this is a different diff than was in that housing originally. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take my nylon knife and scrape this off. You will note that this diff does have a little bit of rust buildup because it was stored without oil on it and it just has some really light surface rust. That's something that I'm also gonna be taking off before I seal this thing up. As you can see, the silicone does scrape off super easy. You wanna to try to keep it out of your diff and if it is gonna fall in there, you do wanna get it out. To clean up that rust, I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with this more aggressive Scotch-Brite pad. If you have tons of rust, you really do need to make sure that that surface is pretty flat, but this is basically just surface rust, so I'm gonna scuff it up with this, that'll remove it. I'll wipe it a few times and then we'll degrease it and get it ready to be sealed up. And as you can see, just with that really light, quick wipe with the Scotch-Brite pad, the rust is pretty much gone and we're ready to clean it and move it forward to getting all sealed up. Right now, as I'm hitting this with this degreaser, I am getting a lot off. And once again, it's very important that you get this super clean so your gasket will seal properly. It's looking pretty good right here. The very last thing that I'm gonna do before I get my RTV ready to assemble this thing is just feel my surface and see if there are any high spots in the metal or any nicks. On this one, I could feel some little nicks right here. So what I'm gonna do is take a file, keep it super flat and go towards the outside of the diff so I don't get metal chips in my diff and just knock down any high spots that would make it harder to seal. Low spots aren't as critical since low spots will be filled with that gasket maker. Now you wanna get your diff set up in a place where it's easily accessible and you'll easily be able to put your carrier or your cover on. If your diff is already installed in your car and you're just putting a cover on, it's often a lot easier than doing what I'm gonna to have to do here. So now we could go ahead and get our gasket maker out. The process for this is put on the RTV onto your surface go ahead and assemble your part and hand tighten it down, wait an hour and then torque it down. So I'm gonna take you through that process right now. Let's crack this thing open and get it on our surface. So once you open your package, you'll have your gasket maker, a nozzle, and on the gasket maker itself, the cap has that little spike in there, which you're gonna to use to pop open this container. 
just like that and just presses on now you're open so now you could thread your cap on there and you could go ahead and cut that off now you'll notice that there are steps in this nozzle I would start with the smallest one that you think you could realistically use. If you go too big, it's going to be a lot harder to control your gasket maker as you put it on. So now what we need to do is lay a continuous bead around this whole surface that needs to be sealed up. You want to go around the bolt, so I'm going to do a continuous bead and then do a little bit on the outside to get what I don't cover. And then from there, we'll need to quickly get the diff on here because you want to assemble everything once the silicone is still wet. So let's go ahead and do it. Now is a good time to note that there are different kinds of gasket maker. This one that I'm using here is Permatex Ultra Black. This one is very good at oil resistance and it's also pretty good at heat resistance. For different applications, you might want to use different products though. So do take a look on Permatex's site to see what's available and I do have these linked down in the description below. Towards the inside of those bolt holes, I am going a little bit lighter so the silicone doesn't all just squeeze right into the diff. And that's looking pretty decent. Ideally, you want to have enough that it creates a gasket across your whole surface, but doesn't squeeze all the way out and have tons of excess outside and inside your diff. And now before that stuff dries too much, we need to go ahead and get our diff set down on there. And in a perfect world, you don't really want to rotate the diff too much once you get it stuck on there. You want to just touch it down and then start installing your fasteners until they're all hand tight. I'm sort of going in a star pattern just to evenly tighten this thing down. And once again, you're not going tight here, you're just getting them all hand tight. And you want to see just a little bit of silicone easing out the sides, which is what I see right now, which is perfect. All right, so now I've got everything just lightly tightened down there. And as you can see, there's just a tiny, tiny bit of gasket maker oozing out the side, which means we used a really good amount. Now we're gonna go ahead and wait about an hour and then we'll come back out, torque this down and we'll be in great shape. The very last thing that we need to do after about an hour goes by is get a torque wrench and torque down all our fasteners that hold our diff together. Now you do want to do this in a star pattern or use a recommended torque pattern. This will ensure that your diff evenly tightens down and that you get the best seal. I'm going to go ahead and do this now. And once this thing is all torqued down, you're actually good to go and this diff is ready to be used. Do take a look at your package and see when the sealer will be fully cured. This one takes about 24 hours. And once you hit that cure point, you're ready to use it under normal driving conditions, all filled up with oil, and you'll be in great shape. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. And if you learned something, let me know down below what sort of diff you're sealing up. Subscribe for more, and I hope you stick around for the next one.